going to talk about now is what to do if you get an attachment and what happened to me in that uh, Japanese house that I was staying at, uh, Akiara round two. So basically, when I got to Akigahara, I was going to do a, a, another ghost hunt after all the evidence I caught in the first one. And then I was going to ghost hunt the night that I found the, the lady uh, hanging. So I canned the ghost hunt. I just didn't want to go back in there after finding her. And that's when I started to realise, wow, there, there's, this is real. The bodies aren't deep in at all. They're around the tracks, around the bus stop. So long story short, I'm not going to go into crazy details about it, but the first night I got back and I only had, I think I had like 1,500 subscribers. So I was live streaming them and telling them about what I'd found and, and uh, in my little uh, traditional Japanese room. About nine o'clock at night, I started hearing noises. Like little kid feet running up the hallway. It was a double story old Japanese house and I was in the back room on the second story. And you could hear a few bumps and heavy footsteps. And for the first night, you know, I think I was a bit rattled about finding that woman hanging. For the first night, I thought, oh, it's this other guess. You know, I had an uneasy feeling. But I just put it down to other guests were, you know, going to their room, but it went all night. I sort of got a little bit of sleep in and out. But every time I went to go to sleep, I'd hear those footsteps run up the hallway and stop at my door, basically. And then heavier ones coming up the stairs. In the morning, I, you know, woke up sort of, I didn't really sleep much and walked out and all the other rooms were empty. No one had been in there at all. So I sort of didn't think too much of it. I thought they might have just left early or something like that. So I went back into the forest all day. Then after being in the forest all day again, I come back out and I was live streaming again and my legs were starting to get very tired. And uh, I live streamed for a bit with my subscribers and uh, about nine o'clock at night, started again. Little kid feet running up and down the, the hallway. I mean, the Japanese houses are made of wood and, uh, you know, paper thin walls. So I just thought it was guests again, so, or something like that. But when I went out there, there was no one there. I was the only one in the old Japanese house. So I didn't really get much sleep that night. Every time I went to go to sleep, I'd hear the feet run up or the big heavy footsteps. There was like little light feet and there was heavy footsteps coming up the stairs. And it went all night again. And people on the live stream were starting to notice it as well. What's that noise? You know, what's that? I'm like, oh, it must be other guests. But then every time I went out there, I went and used the toilet. There was uh, no one there. And I started live streaming uh, what was happening out there and stuff like that. So this all went all night again. And it only stopped as soon as the first rays of sunlight in the morning turned up. So as soon as it got a little bit light, all noises would stop straight away. So then I went back into the suicide forest all day again. So the third night, I was talking about it with my subscribers on live stream and that, about the noises and stuff like that. And I found the second body, because I was still trying to get back in there to ghost hunt. And I had to find the second body, I was just... Wow, then the noises started again, about nine o'clock. Same footsteps running up the hallway, same big heavy thudding steps. 
by then I was starting to get worried. I was like, what's going on here? And I said the Lord's Prayer and and everything I could. But the biggest problem with whatever they were, they'd back off, but they'd come back. So I went all night again. And I was, I was getting exhausted because I'd been in the forest all day. I'm lying in there in this old double-story Japanese house on the edge of a suicide forest. It's in Lake Seiko. And I'm live streaming again and people are hearing it. I put the live stream uh, camera out in the, like where they come up the stairs, there's a, two toilets to your right and there's a sort of a hallway. And by then people on my live stream are starting to comment like they've seen stuff and, you know, it was starting to get serious. The noises were getting louder and louder. Like this wasn't, you know, a Japanese person walking around. These were heavy thuds. And the footsteps were basically getting closer and closer to my door. As I said, I'm not going into all the details of it. I'm just giving you a brief account of what happened. So that went all night again. And I was starting to get worried. The fourth night was the craziest paranormal night of my life and the scariest night of my life that includes going overseas to Afghanistan, Iraq, East Timor nearly drowning you know this would have, it was the scariest night of my life so I got back I already found two bodies about 9 o'clock at night, I was live streaming again with my um, subscribers. If any of them are watching this, they will can verify what I'm saying. It was about 9.30 or 10 o'clock. I heard voices, like talking as clear as you can hear me now. A woman and a man were talking in Japanese. And I was on the live stream and I was so thankful. I was like, my God, there's other guests. Thank God I'm not here alone, you know. It's a bit like surfing by yourself and then someone else paddles out. You feel a bit safe from sharks or whatever. So I'm talking on a live stream. I thought, great, I can finally get some sleep. I was exhausted. And I could hear him talking in the room next door. I could hear stuff being moved around. Basically, the, the sounds of two people with suitcases walking into a room and putting their stuff away and doing what you do. And I can remember just the relief. It was just awesome. There's other guests here. There's other people here. You know, just felt safer. So after doing the live stream, I think, uh, you know, I said, oh, about 11.30, I think it was, or 12. I said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to bed, guys. And, and this is when it started to spiral out of control. So I said goodbye to my subscribers on the on the live stream and got up, went to go to the toilet, opened up the sliding door, and I walked left up the little hallway to the toilets. The room next to me, the door was wide open and it was just pitch black inside. Now you gotta remember, for an hour or two, people on live stream even heard them speaking. I've heard people next door moving around, talking. And I stopped, and I looked left in there, and there was no one there. No one had moved in. It was exactly the same as I'd walked past it four hours before. Hadn't been touched. And that's when I got dizzy and just went, whoa, because it just... It was crazy.